Nahar Vardanyan and welcome back to the Guitar Etude series. Today we have an etude by Fernando Sor. I finally got to him, except it's not going to be one of those super famous etudes. This is Opus 35, number 23. Now to give you a little bit of context, the if you're following the actual opus numbers and not the renumber system in Segovia's book, this comes right after that really popular B minor, which is number 22. Uh, opus 35. In Segovia's book, I believe that's number 5. Anyway, so the reason I chose number 23 is because of these rolls slash arpeggios. And I think it's a really important skill to have because oftentimes we have to roll our chords, sometimes we have to play arpeggios that are more than four strings, in which case you have to triple thumb or double thumb, depends. And here, that's exactly um, the opportunity you have to practice. Now, to do the six string ones, you will have to triple stroke the thumb. And to do this efficiently, you have to play the thumb rest stroke. There is no way you're gonna do free stroke like that and make it in time, it's just not possible. And it's not gonna sound smooth, so really this works, you're just letting, it's kind of like strumming a chord down, so they're all gonna be rest strokes. The last one, you can play free stroke. But the key thing is to make it even. Not like you can't just let those go and then slow down. So key thing to keep it even. And then with the ones that are only five strings, you do double double thumb and then I am A. Now the way it's written, you end on M. And then you have the last note that's on the eighth note on the the beat. There are some that are across four strings, in which case it's just a regular, no double, just P, I, M, A, F. And that's how you would practice all of them. Um, what I did also just for practice sake, instead of stopping on M, the arpeggio, I added the last note um, and I completed the arpeggio. Which I actually thought it kind of sounded cooler and fuller. So once you have uh, mastered what Sor actually wrote, which it's M is the last note, B is the last note, and then you play the thumb, go ahead and add a note. Complete the arpeggio. And practice it that way, just for technique's sake, why not? Um, I wouldn't perform it that way because it's not what's written, but for practice, go ahead and change it. And that makes it a, a complete all six strings and then you return to that with the, uh, with the complete return. Now, the next step, what you can also do is complete all of the strings. So instead of stopping on the second string or the alternative stopping on the third string, go ahead and do all the way to the sixth string. Good practice because this kind of arpeggios happen in other repertoire pieces so you can work on all the evenness or just being able to drag your finger and then coming back and playing the other notes now of course if uh, the notes are only five don't go to the sixth string don't add a note that doesn't belong and on the five and the ones that are only four strings just and on the right notes. This way you can use the same etude and you can practice different techniques for the right hand. Now, even though the left hand is not too complicated, this etude isn't really for beginners. It's really not easy to do these even and fast. So you need to have some kind of speed in your right hand before you can tackle this. Um, once you can play arpeggios fairly fast, you can add this to practice like bursts almost, and then learn to control the the flow with the, with your thumb uh, on multiple strings. So I would recommend this for someone who can who can play um, at a certain speed. If if you can't, you'll just get frustrated and it will sound uneven. So practice your arpeggios before you tackle this one. And in the meanwhile, I wish you good luck with all of these, and I'll see you next week with another etude. Thank you so much for watching. <laughs>